A massive boxing match is coming to the Garden on August 6th. Jake Paul will be taking on Haseem Rahman Jr. in what is prepared to be an incredible fight. We are joined now by Jake. Uh, Jake, congrats on your success so far. Um, first off, I'm happy to see that you're healing okay because apparently you'd broken your back from carrying the previous promotions. Is that right? You're okay though, right? Yeah, everything is good. I just had a little back strain from doing all of the work. You know, a lot of a lot of my opponents, they can't sell fights. I have to do all of the work. And so it just puts a lot of strain on my back. But I'm doing okay. I will still be able to fight August 6th. Everyone, everything is fine. So make sure everyone is there. Madison Square Garden, MSG.com, pull up. Jake, you have had this impressive rise in just five professional fights but now you are fighting Rachman who has had a hundred fights under his belt we knew that you needed to take a step at some point but why is now the right time to take this big of a leap I just am ready I'm ready for a professional boxer I'm ready to risk it all you know this is this is low-key psychotic most fighters in their sixth fight don't take this big of a risk. My manager was like, why do you want to do this, Jake? My brother was like, I don't think you should do this, Jake. Um, but that's not me. I want a challenge. I want to make history. I want to do things differently. If you look at Canelo's sixth fight, he fought a guy who was two and two. Gervonta Davis's sixth fight, he fought a guy who was two and eight. So these guys had really easy fights to build their record. That's not what I want to do. I want to put on massive events and I want to fight really hard people because I know how good I am. And August 6th, I'm going to knock them out. What I've read is that during the pandemic, when he was your sparring partner, he was jawing a little bit with you. Is this a little bit more personal than professional? 100%. You know, he was in the gym saying, You'll never be a fighter. You'll never be good. You're just a YouTuber. You'll never have a boxing career. Saying all of these things, offending me, coming at me, attacking me personally. And so I've always wanted this fight. And August 6th, we're going to see who actually the professional boxer is. How much better of a fighter are you now than you were two years ago? I'm 10 times better. That fighter who I was two years ago, I would knock that fighter out today. And Hasim, I think, knows that I've been working harder than him. And he knows, he knows how good I am. And so he could say all he wants. He could say he was taking it easy on me. But August 6th, the best thing about boxing is the truth always gets revealed. And so we're going to see the truth. It has always felt like you have had a challenge of making non-believers and turning them into believers, which I feel like you have in the past couple of fights. What has been the biggest hurdle in making that happen? You know, I think it's time. I think time tells. And over the course of time, people now have seen how serious I take this. And over the course of the next couple of years, they will see how serious I am about this even more. And they will see how good I am. They will respect my skill. Um, and that will get rid of the critics. Um, because no matter what people want to say about me, they may not like me. They may think I'm cringe. You know, they may think I'm annoying sometimes or loud mouth. I get it. I get all of those things. I get, I can be all of those things sometimes, but what they have to do, they have to respect how hard I work and what I've done to change the sport of boxing forever. Well, you have carved your own path. I mean, UFC fighters, MMA fighters turned boxers, boxers now as well. Your path has not been a typical one, and we've seen you join with some of the greats, like Conor McGregor. Where is your path taking you? Where do you want the end goal to lead you? I want to create historic fights. I want to create some of the most entertaining and exciting fights of all time against the biggest of names, whether that be Mike Tyson, Canelo, Conor McGregor, Nate Diaz. I want all of those names. And the list goes on. Floyd Mayweather, whoever it might be, um, let's make it all happen. I want to sell a ton of pay-per-views and give the fans an entertaining and exciting fights and change how boxing events are promoted um, and, the, and bring in this new generation of boxing fans. 
now you mentioned a name that I think boxing fans all recognize, and that's Mike Tyson. Even at an advanced age, how would you feel if you stepped into the ring with Iron Mike? I would beat him. I would beat him. I'm too fast. I'm too elusive. And he's powerful and strong and has knockout power. But if he can't hit me, then he can't knock me out. Um, and I don't believe he can hit me. And so I think I would win that fight. You've talked a little bit about how you want to change the game. You have been an advocate for changing fighters' pay. In fact, you back that up with the pay structure that you give the fighters that are on the undercard in your bouts as well. How, bi how important is it for you to change the fight game, change the way that fighters are getting uh, represented in the, in the field? It's very important to me. I see how hard fighters work. I mean, I see how they're taken advantage of and mistreated constantly and underpaid. Um, and so I've been using my platform to speak out against this. And I've also been taking money out of my own bank account to pay fighters the most they've ever been paid times 10. Um, and so time in and time again, I'm just leading by example and setting the precedent. I think fighters need to band together. I think we need to have each other's backs. And I think eventually there needs to be a fighters union. It's a big undertaking. One day I want to create the fighters union so that everyone can get paid more and get long-term health care and so on and so forth. Um, and that's one of my long-term goals, um, but it's super important to me. Do you think that you can get to the point where you'll shame the bigger organizations into following suit with your business model? For sure. For sure. And it's going to take years and years and it's going to take more fighters like Francis Ngannou from the UFC who's spoken out about not being paid enough. It's going to take people who aren't scared to speak out against the system. Um, but more and more people are coming out of the woodworks and the movement is getting bigger and bigger slowly and slowly and eventually change will have to be made. Well, you're certainly not afraid to be on the forefront of change. You have become a popularizer of women's boxing as well. Bushwick's own Amanda Serrano has been on multiple fight cards for you. Why was it important for you to shine that spotlight on women's professional boxing? For me, when I met Amanda Serrano, uh, we became friends instantly. And she was just so cool. And I saw that this was one of the greatest fighters of all time who is getting paid five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars to fight which didn't make any sense to me all she needed was that spotlight to be shined on her uh, she needed a little bit of help she needed a little bit better management and that's where me and my team came in gave her that promotion gave her that extra boost and now boom she's making seven figures uh just had the highest payday from in all of women's boxing history. Um, so she really, she deserves all the credit, but we just came in and helped. Yeah, she headlined at the Garden where you were going to be fighting on August 6th. How great was it to be there and to watch her as the headliner at the Garden? It was a movie, straight up. <laughs> it was electric, man. It was really like we were in the Rocky movie or Creed. And now she's back. She's back August 6th and gets to put on another show in front of MSG. Um, so just excited for everyone in New York to be able to come out and get to see me and Amanda put on a show. Well, we look forward to this show. Jake Paul will be fighting Asim Rockman Jr. on August 6th at the Garden. Uh, Jake, best of luck to you, and uh, thanks for the time, man. Thank you, man. Have a good day.